Hello and welcome to today's video. If you are new here, please subscribe if you enjoy this video. Our videos are not a diagnosis. We are simply speaking our opinions, not facts. Today we are going back in time in the Amberverse. We will be watching the infamous Becky and Amber breakup video and seeing what narcissistic personality traits reared their head. Because Amber abuses the copyright system, some clips will be heavily edited. Let's get to it. All right, so do you want to tell them? Okay. Um, I guess I'm gonna go ahead and just say it. Um, we have broke up. It happened Sunday. And it was initiated by me. The, th the fact of the matter is, is I've had a lot of time to think. We just want different things in life. You know, Amberlynn wants to leave Kentucky one day and she wants to see her family and she wants to move to another state. And it's like, this is my home and this is where my family is. And I don't want to leave. I want to go to Oklahoma if, you know, you move there or California or if you move to Virginia. Like all these places you've mentioned that you could go to someday. I want to travel. I've never been west of Kentucky. I'd love to go see you wherever you go. More than a year has passed and Amber has still not left Kentucky. Amber and Becky's relationship has been severed. Amber has no family or friends in Kentucky and yet she still stays. It seems that the conversation of Amber not wanting to live in Kentucky came up many times. I recall Amber saying to Becky's face that Kentucky didn't feel like a home. The conversation came up so much between them that it was valid enough for Becky to list it as one of the reasons why Becky wanted to terminate the relationship. So why is Amber still living in Kentucky? In the same apartment, narcissists are known to live in a fantasy world. They visualize grand upcoming events for their future, but carry no responsibility to put the fantasies into action. Oftentimes the fantasies are so grand that it is unrealistic. Amber's many years of saying she wanted to leave Kentucky seemed to have fallen flat on its face. It may happen one day, but it is clear now that it didn't mean as much to Amber as she claimed, considering she never did leave. A year has passed and Amber hasn't taken any steps to leave Kentucky. Laziness may play a part, her weight will absolutely play a part, but mainly I think it comes down to the common tactic of a narcissist living in a fantasy world. The narcissist creates fantasy worlds to justify their torture of you. They enjoy setting standards for you, while knowing that you will not achieve those fantasies. There was a constant threat over Becky's head. If Becky wanted to stay with Amber, then she knew that one day she might have to leave her friends and family behind and move to a different state to please Amber. Amber made it clear very early in the relationship that she didn't want to stay in Kentucky, which put Becky and the relationship in a place that dictated that it would not last. The relationship should not have continued from that early stage, as it is a deal-breaker. Becky didn't want to leave her friends and family, but Amber wanted her to. For Amber to request such a life change from Becky, while knowing Becky was close with her friends and family, is a rather selfish act that shows her lack of empathy. Amber had no desire to stay by her own family's side, for many reasons, and she had not lived near them for a long time when she started her relationship with Becky. To request Becky to consider leaving her family shows a deep lack of empathy, and ensures that Amber values her own needs more than Becky. The only reason Becky didn't change state was the sheer determination of not wanting to. There is nothing toxic about wanting to change state or finding that a place is not right for you, but what is toxic is knowing that your partner loves where they live, has their friends and family there, and instead of leaving the relationship, because the deal-breaker goals do not align, they instead mentally torture their partner by constantly threatening a move. Either that person needs to understand that moving is not happening, and if the relationship is good enough, process it and accept your location, or end the relationship and avoid resentment and manipulation. You know, we've been together for four years, and both of our weights. And it's like, Amberlynn tries to start Jenny Craig. <laughs> And all these other things. And I'm going to be honest. I don't join them with her. I should, but I don't. But it's not like I'm also going out of my way to eat horribly in front of her. Or suggest we order this or do this. No, I don't do that. But I'm not strong enough to be that support.
right now. People with narcissistic personality disorder are extremely resistant to changing their behavior, even when it's causing them problems. Here we see Becky showing her desire to better her own life and health, with also the thought and care for Amber's health. Becky knows that she is unable to help Amber, as she herself is not meeting her own health goals. Becky knows that their unhealthy ways may continue to drag each other down, as they had not yet found a positive change. I will say I give credit to Becky for thinking this way, but I think she needed to remove some of that blame off of her own shoulders, as it wouldn't have mattered what she did or didn't do because Amber was stuck in her ways regardless of Becky's existence. A year has passed without Becky, and Amber is still yet to lose weight. Narcissists are stubborn and will avoid change. Self-reflection can be a challenge for them, as it damages their protective shell of perfection. Narcissists typically avoid ownership for anything that may portray them in a negative light. At times, they may downplay, rationalize, or completely lie about their behavior. They avoid the topic and commitment to change, and carry on as though all is well, while repeating the same behavior. A year has passed and Amber did not move. A year has passed and Amber did not better her health. But I love her. I, I love her. I love her. I don't care what anybody else thinks of her. I know who she is. And she has her faults, and I have my faults too. But I want to always have this one in my life. And not even a dime. It's nothing to do with money. I just want her in my life. I want that too. I mean, and you know that. I feel that Becky shows a great deal of maturity in the way that she carries this conversation. It is sad to see her claim that she wanted to keep Amber in her life, when not long after this, Amber completely dismissed Becky from her life, began bashing her online, and showing that Becky had never meant much to her. Becky was replaced in only a matter of weeks, and the fairy tale of carrying on a friendship was soon demolished. Narcissists have a tendency to lie about past partners. It is an attempt to gain control and manipulate how others see them. Sometimes they do this to gain sympathy and pity and to come out looking like the better party. Meanwhile, Becky kept her mouth shut and refused to partake in talking bad about Amber and held on to her dignity. Amber's tears were short-lived, as only a few weeks later, wifey had completely replaced Becky. Amber's display of heartache is nothing more than an act, as one cannot move on so quickly if they have suffered such a great loss. Amber's ego took a major hit when Becky decided to leave the relationship relationship, and that was the main cause for her pain. She was losing her caretaker, dog walker, food runner, and narcissistic supply. When the narcissistic supply leaves the relationship, it causes the narcissist to suffer from narcissistic injury. Usually it is their fragile ego that suffers pain, rather than their heart. Oh, what is my hair? Amber barely said anything while Becky was pouring her heart out, so I found it interesting that one of the first things Amber decides to add to the conversation is her acknowledgement of her appearance. I'm not going to read too much into it, as the situation may be making Amber lost for words, and this is an attempt just to fill the air. But I will admit, the constant self-gazing and mentioning of her appearance, after Becky had a deep and emotional speech, was just classic Lynn. I just feel like this is the healthiest choice for us both. But um, for now, me and her are going to do this together. We're going to work through this together. Whenever both of us are hurting, we're going to be there for each other. With figuring out where our lives are going, we're going to be there for each other. And even when we part, part ways, we're still going to be just a phone call. A text message, a flight away, you know? Yep. Becky declares that she will always be there for Amber, and that they will continue to be in each other's lives. Amber remains silent and then only offers a very unconvincing, yep. To me this shows that Amber was already considering Becky's importance to her, or lack thereof. For most people, when a healthy relationship ends, but you still love each other, and it was just time to move on, then both parties would show an interest in kind words to one another, even if they do permanently part ways in the future. In this moment, it seems more to me that Amber is sulking, rather than processing heartache. She is mad with Becky and knows that Becky won't be as important to her life any longer. Meanwhile, poor Becky is considering a new balance for her life that will generously have space for Amber. Two very different perspectives from two very different personalities. It's just... I have a lot 
to take care of in life. I've got, you know, I'm going through a hard grieving process right now. And I can't be the partner that she needs. Because I am angry with God right now. And that reflects on me here. And it's like, you know, with my family and my friends and whatnot, you know, I can tell them these things. And I have told them these things. But it's like, I'm able to put up a mask and be someone else. Well, still be myself, but mask that hurt and that pain and that anger while I'm around everybody else. But whenever I'm home, that stuff is at the forefront. And I try to push it away. But I cannot be the partner that Amberlynn needs right now. I can't. And I try to push it away. But I cannot be the partner that Amberlynn needs right now. I can't. I feel like if there was ever a point where Amber should have interjected and offer Becky some words of support, this would be the time. Becky is brutally laying out her pain, not just to Amber, but everyone watching. Losing a parent is heartbreaking, so much so, that words fail to explain the pain that it causes people. For Becky to deeply love her mom and lose her, the grieving time will be without limit. Becky is struggling with her faith, her anger, and the major loss in her life, and being very open and honest about such private things. Meanwhile, Amber only sighs for herself. I find this one moment explains a whole lot. I just, I feel like myself, I don't want any kind of relationship. Because I want to focus on myself. I want to grieve my mother properly. <laughs> It just feels like a different path now. And I don't want to hold her back. You know, I don't want her to have to be in Kentucky for the rest of her life and away from her family or her dreams and what she wants and her journey on becoming who she wants to be. And I feel like I hinder that too. Becky stayed true to her word and did not dive straight into a new relationship. She knew what she needed and wanted and was deeply honest about it. Her main focus is grieving her mother and for Amber to remain silent and ignore Becky's pain is rather hard to watch. It's also sad to see Becky say that she doesn't want to hold Amber back from where she wants to live, dreams that she has and her ability to fix her health, because with Becky's absence, nothing ever changed. I don't really know what to say, so... just hurting obviously I don't want to focus on this too much as breakups are hard on most people and words can seem pointless in such times but seeing Becky share her emotions wants and needs all the while she has considered Amber with every sentence she has spoken and Amber's only thought is to share how she feels her focus is on her pain only and there is a complete disregard for the woman that she claimed to love narcissists struggle with showing consideration towards others this is because they have low empathy narcissists don't experience other people as separate individuals but as only a two-dimensional extension of themselves without any feelings or needs, as narcissists struggle to empathize. Other people only exist to meet their needs. Narcissists are oblivious to their impact on others. We're both hurting. And it's like, you know, we are trying to be there for each other, but it's also hard at times. Because, you know, you just look at each other and you get this explosion of pain in your chest. Yeah. But we want to stay in each other's lives, so. Absolutely. Um. And yeah. we're, I mean, you know, we're even trying, you know, even right now, because, you know, we're still going to, you know, do something for the fourth together, me, her, Eric, and Ricky. Um. 
I know a lot that. of people don't understand that my breakups always are very healthy. They're never vicious and vile. I always stay friends with them. You're a lie. Oh, how I wish her words were true. The amount of projection and lies that she placed upon Becky was just flat out evil at points. One in particular was when she blamed Becky for her cancer. I don't think I've ever seen Amber stoop so low. Um, so it's never, you know, some people don't understand it and that's fine. Um, but like Becky's my best friend. In your mind. Regardless if we're in a relationship or not. Like, just because you take out the parts of a relationship that you usually have with someone, why would you take out the best friend aspect? Like, there's no reason for it. Yeah. So, we're not breaking up because anything horrible, you know, neither one of us did each other dirty. Nope. You know, there's no secrets and lies there's nothing as cliche it is, as it is it's literally just sometimes love isn't enough <laughs> and it's like I look at everything I've been through in my life and this hurts me the worst ever this is manipulation Amber has been through many awful things in her life. To say to Becky that she has hurt her more than anyone or anything else on the planet is a deeply hurtful, impactful and manipulative statement, especially being it was proven to be a lie in only a few weeks. Amber quickly replaced Becky, then told everyone that her and Becky were just roommates, and not in love, that she had to fake cry when Becky proposed to her and then continued to spread malicious words about Becky. The statement that Becky has now hurt her more than anything else in life is just a way to guilt trip Becky, make her feel bad for having the audacity to leave Amber. Narcissists are known to manipulate when things aren't going their way, especially if they have suffered narcissistic injury. I can't eat, can't sleep, like typical heartbreak bullshit. <laughs> And I just don't really know what to do, so. I don't know. Perhaps the initial shock of the relationship ending did have an effect on her sleep and hunger, but I can't help but feel this is manipulation too, partly because it doesn't need to be mentioned. Most people have gone through heartbreak, so are well aware of the impacts that take place. Secondly, in a later live stream a few days later, Amber said Becky was being hurtful because she didn't remember that Amber had recently cried over the breakup, which makes her actions seem more like a show and an attempt for attention. And thirdly, because the heartbreak was so short-lived. It had completely cleared up in a matter of days. Statistics show that it can last anywhere between three months to a year or two to recover. So I don't believe Amber's devastation to be legit and feel that it is only narcissistic injury. It'd be a terrible, terrible idea to live together if you're broken up. No, it, it, it's not really. <laughs> it's just a... Uh... Not right now is what I'm saying. Yeah. Turns out, it was indeed a terrible, terrible concept to keep living together. Amber moved a new girlfriend in, before Becky had even began to move out, and was pushed out faster than she could blink. Many ex-couples can live together while the change happens and new homes are found. But for many breakups, it is the worst idea as it can quickly turn toxic, either if neither party are necessarily a bad person. But in reality it is not as easy as break up today, move out tomorrow. Not everyone has a family member or friend they can stay with. Not everyone can afford to move out instantly. Sometimes transition periods need to take place. I can't imagine how Becky felt when Amber moved and her new girlfriend before Becky had fully formed her plan and already moved out herself. The lack of respect for the past is rather insulting. It's also embarrassing for the new partner as your role as the replacement happens so quickly that you are still sharing the same air as the one you replace. It is such a red flag that it is blinding. It was like two months ago, we signed the lease to stay here for another year. But we talked to the leasing office today and we canceled the year lease. So more than likely, we won't be here for another year. Um, we have some goals that we both have for, um, what we want to achieve before moving out. And when we move out, we're gonna be moving out at the same time. Because neither of us wanna leave each other like that. 
It's just wrong. How quickly her intentions changed. It is wrong, a very accurate word choice. As we have seen, they did not move out at the same time, and Becky was pushed out of her home by her replacement. The plan to not resign for another year didn't happen either, as Amber is still living there with her new partner, for over a year now. All the plans of respect were quickly demolished by Amber. Meanwhile, Becky didn't go back on her word. I didn't want to come on here and fake anything. Like, I don't know what it was, but it was so much easier. I hate to bring up the past, but to fake the break, like to fake happiness after the breakup with Crystal and the breakup with Destiny. But as much as those hurt, it just doesn't even compare. I just can't even explain it. Give me a second. I'm sorry. It's just one of those things where it's like, you have to accept what is the best, you know? Turns out this wasn't true either. Amber again tries to convince Becky that this is the worst breakup ever, and it seemed to manipulate Becky rather well, as she seemed to feel it in her heart as she began to cry. If this was Amber's worst breakup ever, that she recovered from in a matter of days, then that would mean the best breakup ever would result in a recovery that lasted only a few seconds. Amber's words are manipulative and well thought out to reach Becky's heart. She may have found it harder to hide the breakup this time around, but it certainly wasn't as impactful as Amber is trying to convince us of. It's just hard to believe that last Tuesday we were sitting here having a really good live stream. I'm pretty sure it was last Tuesday. We are like playing those games and stuff. And then this Tuesday it's like, <sighs> yeah. The fact that you're, oh wow, we should just break up. Y'all will be seeing a breakup video come, come next week. <laughs> Becky's scared. She's big scared. And yeah, Becky and I do not want to be in a relationship with anyone. Yeah, no. We've both decided that that's just not right. Yeah, no. I mean, I'll just speak for myself. We've talked about it, but I don't want to be in a relationship. I know I have a bad record of always finding someone like a month after a breakup. <laughs> but I cannot see myself ever remotely looking at someone like I looked at you. Not even close, so. <sighs> the fact that Amber didn't even last a month before she replaced Becky says it all. Narcissists are known to move on to a new supply quickly. This is the discard phase, when someone often realizes how little they meant to the narcissist, and how easily replaceable they are to them, because it is not about them, but about what they did for the narcissist. A narcissist's cerebral cortex is underdeveloped. This area of the brain is responsible for memory, emotions, and behavior. The reason a narcissist replaces a partner so quickly is because they are not able to form a deep bond the way that others do. Narcissists look at people as tools that they can use to fit their own needs. It is usually not important to them who you are, but rather what you can do. It's not the end, you two st still be good friends. Yeah, that's what we're aiming for. It's like an unconditional love that's just like, you know? Unconditional love until you can be replaced. That is not unconditional. Unconditional love is love without strings. It is free and isn't based on what they do for you. It is meaning you want nothing but their happiness and safety and request nothing in return. Like the love someone has for their child. A narcissist's love is extremely conditional. Becky had removed herself from being the supply and was quickly replaced and all of her good deeds and kind heart was soon forgotten. And then in the future, whenever you're like, yeah, Becky, I want you to meet my new girlfriend. And she's like, oh my God. Uh. And you're like, see? I'm not having another girlfriend ever. <laughs> I don't want one either. I mean that. You're a lie. <sighs> Amber Lynn's a really good kisser. I'm just letting everybody know that. She's the best kisser I've ever had. Then you're never going to have that again. I know. Unless we do one last makeout session later. <laughs> oh my god. It's whatever. An interesting mood swing. It's like Amber suddenly remembered she is meant to be mad at Becky and sulking, and currently suffering the worst pain of her life. Narcissists are not able to share reciprocal emotions. They express emotions that seem appropriate at the time. They may mimic emotions in order to gain leverage in a situation. They are actors. They can easily and quickly turn on the charm, and can turn on the tears just as quick. 
if she was breaking up with me over, like, things, then I would be like, no, don't do it. Like, I could fix A, I could fix B, I could fix C, we can make this work. But this is more so a breakup of her not wanting to be in a relationship. It's just not the type of happiness that you should have inside of a relationship. And it's just how it is. That's That stuff's not really fixable. Not, yeah, because sometimes love just isn't enough. I don't really buy that, as Becky did mention things. Her main things were location, health, and mourning. These are things that Amber could have worked on. If you decide to commit to someone, then location is one of the first things that will be discussed, along with marriage, children and traveling, and other such life events. If Amber has decided to be with Becky, then respect and understanding for Becky's family and location should have taken place in a healthy relationship if it is intended to last forever. If that person can't imagine living in that location forever, then the relationship should not have continued. Health and weight is another of Becky's things. Amber needed to work on her weight long before Becky entered her life and long after Becky left. This was something that a healthy relationship could have worked on together. In fact, sometimes being a team in such situations can make the mission a little bit easier. The main and last thing Becky mentioned was grieving her mother. It is no secret how Amber treated Becky's mother and how she treated Becky after the loss of her mother, which we will get into deeper in a later video. But in short, Amber was an unsupportive partner for Becky during the worst time of Becky's life. If Amber had been a role model of support during these hard times, then I can't imagine it would have helped the relationship dilute further. In fact, it would have done the opposite and made the relationship stronger. Narcissists' low empathy make them an unsupportive partner during times of loss. They resent the fact that the attention is not on them, and that the pity party is not being thrown for them. They are jealous that their partner's attention is being focused on their pain and loss, instead of being solely on them. All of this combined, sounds as though it is denial. A narcissist believes that they are above everyone else, fault and blame cannot, and should not be placed on their shoulders. Amber says sometimes love is not enough, which is a deflection to avoid all the times that she wasn't the perfect partner. No one is a perfect partner 24-7, but the difference is that most people are able to take accountability for their wrongs and work on fixing them. But instead Amber focuses on deflection. And it's like, this weird feeling I keep having is, this is just me being honest, like, you get so comfortable in relationships and you let yourself go. Yeah. And it's like, now that we're broken up, I want to better myself. Yeah. But then I feel guilty because it's like, why didn't I do that while I was with you? you so then it makes me not want to better myself. I always want you to better yourself. That's a big reason why we're it's doing like, this is to better ourselves. But it's like, I feel guilty. There's no reason to. Even thinking about, like, just bettering myself in any way. But why? Why? Because why didn't I do that, like, while I was with you? It's because I know why. Like, you just get too comfortable. It is what it is. Like I just said, it's... But it's just Circumstantial, sucks. it's routines, it's the people you're around. This seems like manipulation, because after a year, and a new relationship that would have contained the love bombing stage, Amber has still not bettered herself. It is true that some couples get too comfortable and take their partner and the relationship for granted, and may let themselves go, but I don't believe this is the case here. As Amber was already giving up before Becky and never bettered herself after Becky, so to say she feels guilty for wanting to better herself seems like a tactic to make Becky feel guilty. I'm actually having to, you know the craziest part about this heartbreak is there is nothing that numbs it for me. Like, food doesn't help. Nothing helps. Food actually makes me feel worse because that's something that we bonded over. <laughs> yeah, nothing gives me joy right now, so. Yeah. Becky has opened her heart and soul on this stream. She has maturely discussed her needs and feelings, and equally shared thoughts, consideration, and the airtime with Amber. Meanwhile, all Amber has managed to mention so far is me, myself, and I. She feels this way, she thinks this, she can't do this, she can't do that. Narcissists are known to focus on their wants and their needs, and pay little mind to the people around them. Their low empathy makes it difficult for them to not think of themselves above everything else. Don't give in to rebounds. Oh, that would hurt me. 
Oh, having seeing rebounds? You make out no, with no, someone. No, 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 well, no, no, not no, no, seeing no, no, you no, no, make no, out with them because no, you want to be doing it in front of me. Interesting. Becky getting a rebound would hurt Amber. So Amber does exactly that, claims a rebound, and does indeed kiss her in front of Becky, sleeps with her on the first day of meeting and flaunts the childish hickeys in front of Becky's face. The intent to hurt was obvious. Wifey had it all for Amber. She was there to hurt Becky by rubbing it in her face, to show Becky that she is easily replaced, to fill the shoes of the narcissistic supply, and take over the duties of dog walker, food runner, and live-in maid. The consideration for Becky's feelings was set to 0%. And it's like, you never realize how much you actually like a place until you have to leave it. I do like Kentucky. Like, what was I? What? I was... Ugh. Manipulation. Mind games. Deception. Narcissists love playing little head games to keep the narcissistic supply on their toes. During Amber and Becky's entire relationship, Amber drilled it into Becky that she hated Kentucky and would not and could not stay there. Meanwhile, over a year has passed since this relationship ended, and Amber has remained in Kentucky without a single complaint since. Where do I see myself in years time? Probably still heartbroken. <laughs> no, I'm joking. In years time, I hope that... See, I feel guilt wanting happiness for myself. What the fuck is wrong I with don't, me? That's the opposite of what but I'm doing here. But I feel guilt. That'll pass. What, what what is that called? Like, why do I feel... I need to see a therapist for real now. <laughs> oh, God. It's because you're thinking in your head. You're you're thinking about me. God, you're I can't thinking, stop. why couldn't I have done these things? For Becky. But see, that's the thing. I don't want it for me. You shouldn't want it for me. I'm still going to feel guilty. You should want it for you. If I'm ever happy again, I'm going to feel guilty. So it is what it is. Manipulation. Saying if she ever feels happy again, in her entire life, when only a few weeks later she would be loved up with a new supply, shows her true character, and how little her words mean. She goes on to keep the focus on her, and throws some more confetti in her pity party, by saying that she needs therapy for real now, when she was already in need of it, that is more manipulation. Becky goes on to say that Amber is thinking of her, and the guilt will pass. But I am pretty confident that Amber wasn't thinking of Becky at all, she thought only of herself, and proved that to everyone, with the fast introduction of wifey. I wish her nothing but the best. And the best is not me, so... <sighs> of course it's not. Wishing someone the best, when in the same breath, focusing on yourself and your pity party is eye-roll inducing. It is common when some people are dumped and hurting, narcissistic or not, they can have the tendency to throw a pity party and wallow in the pain. But it is classic narc Lynn to focus on herself while pretending to focus on another. Next year is gonna be, I'm gonna be looking back at this very moment and I hope that I can sit there and say, wow, I made it through, but. You did even better than that girl. You made it to the next month and looked back and laughed with your new supply. And I know Becky's hurting too and it's like, Micro expressions can sometimes say a lot more than words can. Another name for rolling of the eyes is shrugging the eyes. It is a common form of disapproval or sarcasm. It is a form of dismissal. When Amber says that she knows Becky is hurting too, while rolling her eyes at it, she shows that she doesn't care for Becky's pain. She cares only for her own, because as a narcissist, she feels that her pain is much more important and more valid than Becky's pain. We're both hurting, but we know that it's the right thing. Mainly on her end, of course. Again, she rolls her eyes when discussing Becky's needs and feelings. But yeah, I'm gonna go. If you have a narcissist in your life, then please reach out to the people that you trust. Know that a life spent with them doesn't have to be forever. If your safety is in jeopardy, then talk with professionals, seek therapy, contact authorities, request help from loved ones, and only act when it is safe to do so. Know that you are not alone and that you deserve safety and happiness. Thanks for watching our channel. Please hit that like button and subscribe if you want to see more. Until next time, stay safe.